React app to the project that we've been working on. So I'll open up this Mongoose demo. Right now we've got our server folder. Let's create our uh, client folder. So I'll say npx, whoops, create React app, and then we'll just call this client. Okay. And what I want to do, because um, we don't really like have a wireframe for what we're working on, but essentially I want to have something sort of mirroring what we have on the back end. So we'll have a page where we can actually see all of our cities. We'll have a page where we can create a new one, that kind of thing. So we'll have some different routes, which means that we're going to have to install what? Axios. Not for the routes. We will want to install that, though. Reach router. Right, that will actually give us the different front end routes. Okay, so I'm going to do both of those in one shot. I'm going to go into my client folder and then we'll say npm install, or I can do i for short. So axios space at reach slash router. Okay, and then I'll open up my, uh, my client folder here. We know we're going to be working in the source directory, right? I'm also going to create a folder for our views here. So let's go views. Okay, and these will be basically representing our different routes. So inside of our app.js, while that's installing, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm gonna comment out these guys because we're not gonna use, actually I'll just delete them entirely. And then probably I'll just rip out everything inside here. Okay, so if we know that we're going to have some routes in this app, what are we going to need to import up here at the top? Yeah, we we'll want to get something from reach router, and what I'm going to pull in is going to be the router component itself. So we'll say import router from at reach slash router. Okay, and then inside here, what did I do wrong here? Did I do something wrong? <coughs> yeah, everything should be fine, right? Why am I getting a syntax error here? From expected, which I had. I deleted that. Well, this, this is the app component, right? So I didn't delete that. Um, yeah, I'm a little mystified here, unless VS Code's just slowing down here or something. I don't know what I did wrong. So in here, let's create a little um, router wrapper, right? And this is where I'll have all my individual routes. And then let's create some stuff inside of our views folder. So let's say I wanted to have like a not found route or something. So here, I need to import React, as always. And then um, I'll just create a not found, which takes in some props, but we're not really going to need any props here. And then we're just going to return, yeah, div saying something like page not found, dot, dot, dot. Okay. And then we need to export this as well, right? So export default not found. Okay. I'll put a uh, semicolon in there for Manny. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you're about to get me on that. Good grief. Let me try to uh, redo this. But it's still complaining even about the React, right? What did it say? It expected something. It's expecting from. That was so weird. React from React. Import router from. Whoa, wasn't that weird? I didn't I have the exact same thing like a minute ago? Well, that's that's very puzzling. Is this probably something the spaces that you 
Uh, yeah. Uh, there was there was a gremlin going on there. All right, so let's say I want to import my not found component. I'm going to say import not found from dot slash views and then not found. Okay, and then inside my router here, I can say not found. I can specify this is like my default route. So if everything else fails, then I should hit that guy right there, right? All right, and let's uh, let's start this app to see if that's working. So we'll say npm start. Is it working? Oh, there we go. Good. That is working as expected, right? Because it's the only thing that we had inside of our router. All right, cool. So I want to have a few different routes, one route where we can create a new city. So let's, uh, let's start with that. So I'll just put a little placeholder in here. We'll say um, new city. And then what do I want the path to be? I'm probably going to have that be cities slash new, right? And then let's go and create that inside of our views folder. So we'll go. <coughs> New city.js import react. Okay. I may also want to use some state in this. You guys know why? Yeah, because I'm going to have a form in here that's going to have some data in it, right? And I want to kind of keep track of what that data is. So probably I want to import use state. All right. And then the other thing that we're going to want to import here, because we, we're, we know we're going to need to make some calls back to our server, is going to be what? Axios, right? So Axios from Axios. OK. Now um, let's get our component going. So we'll say const new city equals a component. That takes in some props. I don't think I'm going to give it any props, however. So you can see I'm leaving that part empty. And then down here, let's just export it, right? New city. Semicolon. All right. And then I know I'm going to have this form that's going to have some different inputs. It's going to have the name, the population, and the, um, and the picture. So I can create some state to represent that, right? So let's say const form state set form state, and that's going to be equal to use state. Okay. So what do we want our initial form state to look like? Yeah, it'll probably just be empty data, right? So it'd be something like name would be an empty string. I'll have population. Oh gosh. Stop that. Yeah. Sorry, VS Code just goes bananas sometimes. OK, and then finally, um, image URL. I don't even know how I'm typing with this going on. What the? Stop it. Escape. I, it's like I can't even escape out of this. Uh, oh, here we go. Finally got out of it. Well, that was absolutely terrible. All right, so here we go. We've got our form state, and we've got a function that will allow us to update the form state, right? OK. So I'm going to also want to have some kind of a uh, one of these on change handlers so that I can change my form state every time somebody alters something in one of those updates. You guys remember what that might look like? So I'm going to create a function up here. And then we'll call this on change handler if we want. Okay, what's that? What's that going to take in? What's that? Did someone say props? An event. Okay, perfect. So we're going to take in an event. And then um, we also need to know what is the uh, 
what is the name of that input, right? Where are we going to get that from? We're going to get it from the events target. Does anybody remember what the, the target of the event is? It's the actual input field. Exactly. Cool. So what I'm going to do inside here is I'm going to say set form state. Okay. And then the object that I'm going to give it is this is going to be a brand new object that I'm creating. It's going to take all the current form state data that we have in here. Okay, that's what that spread operator is doing. And then I'm going to alter one particular field value in this case, right? So again, the name we're getting from the events target. Okay. And then the value is going to be what? Yes, exactly. Okay. What if I wanted to destructure those two guys? Could I do it? So I could say something like const name value equals event dot target. Like that, right? And then now I could just shorten these like that. Okay, cool. So that's allowing us to keep the, uh, the form state updated. And then we're also going to need to have some kind of a um, submit handler, right? So every time I actually submit this form. So let's go down here and say function handle submit. That's going to take in what? An event. Yes, exactly. And then what do we need to do? Because we don't want this form to submit the way that it normally would. Yeah, we're going to call this function prevent default. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make my uh, my Axios API call, right? Okay, so we'll say something like axios.post. And then I'm going to pass in the URL that I want this post request to go to. So in our case, our, uh, our local host... Our server, the one that I made, is, run, is going to be running on port 4500. Forty five hundred. And then I want to make this call to API slash cities, right? That's where we're going to create new cities. Okay, and then the data that's going to go along with that will just be what? No. I have a reference to to whatever's in my form currently. Right? What did we call that? We called it form state. Exactly. So that's let's just pass that along. Oops. Cool. And then when I make this request, what is this going to return to me? So you turn it back to your Well, specifically, when I, when I call this, this post function, what am I going to get back from that? If I were to save this to a variable, what is it? What is that thing? Whatever you submit it, whatever you put in the form, right? No, that's this, right? That's the actual form state. But what is this whole thing giving us back? If I, if I saved a reference to this function call, promise, right? There you go. All right, so it's giving us a promise back, which means that we need to respond to a resolved promise by invoking that then method, right? Okay. So we'll say dot then here. And all I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to try to navigate us to a different page in the app. So let's see how we can do that. We should be able to import a special function from, um, from reach router called navigate. So I'll say import navigate from at reach router. Okay. And then all I'm going to want to do is we'll say navigate. And then you can see that the first thing that we need to pass it is what is the string that I want to go to? In other words, like what path am I trying to go to, right? So let's just say, once we've created this, we'll go back to our um, forward slash cities route. Okay? 
Later on, we'll uh, we'll deal with kind of a dot catch situation, but for now, let's just console log if we if we get some kind of an error, right? Okay, fair enough. So we've got our handle submit, we've got our form state intact. Now I really just need to return something from this component, right? So let's return, and then inside here, I'm going to create my form. Okay. On submit is going to be equal to what? It's going to be handle submit. And then inside here, I'm going to have some different labels and uh, inputs as well. So the first one was going to be name input. Okay. So the name of this input, the name is going to be name. Okay. The value is going to be what? Object. It's going to be an object, is that what you said? Yeah. We, we yeah. want the value to just be a string, right? So how do I get the string that represents this input's value? It's inside the form state, isn't it? No, not the on change. This is actually part of the form state right now, right? <laughs> So I can say form state dot name, or if I want to use bracket notation, I can also do name like that, right? Okay, and then I need to have an on change handler, so every time that changes, I want to keep my form state up to date, right? And I'm going to pass in what? On change handler, right? Okay, cool. So let me just duplicate that down. And then we'll just change this. So the second one is going to be the population. Okay, and then this one would be population. Whoops. Let me change both of these at the same time. Oh, shoot, what did I do? Yeah, let's make our lives a little easier. So I select that one, grab this one, population. Okay, and then finally we've got the image URL down here. So let's just change this guy in both spots. Image URL. Okay, finally we've got to have a submit button, right? Because we want to be able to submit the form. Button submit. All right, and then to get this route to actually work, so we built the component, but we need to tie it back into our app.js, right? So let's come up here and let's import new city from dot views slash new city. Okay. And we already have our path right, right in there ready to go. So let's see if we could save that and load this up. Cities slash new. There it is. Our form is uh, is all horizontal. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I should wrap this with like div tags or something, right? All right, so let's wrap this real quick. Wrap with abbreviation div. Same thing here. Div. Okay, finally over here. Div. All right, that should be a little bit better. Now it's at least stacked. The other thing I kind of feel like we might want to do is put some sort of link up at the top of this whole app that would take me back to my cities. So where would I put that? If I want it to be app-wide, do I want that to be in the new city component? No, let's put it up in here, right? So inside my app, let's just create one of these links. Now, I've, I haven't yet imported this from Reach Router, so I do need to do that. And then my link will have this to attribute, which just means where is this supposed to go. So I'm just going to take that to cities, right? Cities like that. And then there's our link up there. Perfect. Looking good. Now, um, <clears throat> I don't yet have a cities component, so I'm just going to build one real quick. There's going to be like nothing in it for now. Cities. Okay, and then inside here, import React from React. OK, 
there. Const cities is just going to be something that takes in some props, right? Um, and then inside here, I'm just going to for now return a div. This is the cities page. Period. Okay. And then let's export that guy. Export default cities. Okay. And then let's bring that in as well. So import, oops, cities from dot use cities. Okay, and then I'll drop that right in here. So I'll make my cities component path equals cities, right? Cool. So now if I click on this, I should, it should at least take me somewhere. All right? So that's cool. That's doing what it's supposed to do. And then if I go back here, let's see about actually submitting this form. So I'm going to open up my console tools here. And the reason why is because I want, I want to kind of keep an eye on my network request because I know I'm about to send a request to the back end. Another thing I want to check too before we even send the request is, is my back end on? No, it isn't. So let's get that guy running. We'll say nodemon server slash server dot js. Okay, cool. I'm expecting that we're going to run into an error here. And there's, and there's kind of a, a reason why I want to show you guys this. So let's insert some, some data or whatever. Let's say we're trying to enter in Burbank. I know it's already there, but okay, the image was some URL.com. Submit. Here we go. We're seeing red down here, and let's see what this is telling us here. So it's saying. Nothing? <laughs> what was the actual error? Just like real life. Failed. Okay, well, let, let's look at our console log because we did set that, right? All right. So here's the log that we're getting inside the console. It's telling us access to this particular URL has been blocked by core's policy. Okay? Cross origin requests are. Only supported for protocol schemes. Okay. Say that one more time. Yeah, exactly. So this is the problem here: is that we're trying to make a request across to to a diff, essentially a different domain, right? We're going from localhost 3000. We're trying to make a request to localhost 4500. So in order for us to be able to handle this, we're going to install another dependency on our uh, on our server side. And what that's essentially going to do is it's going to set a header on all of, our, all of our requests that go back to the server. And the server is then going to say, you can accept requests from any domain. That's all right. That's what this, this dependency is going to do for us. So let's go inside here. I'll just open up a new tab. And then we're going to npm i cores. Okay. And then while that's installing, let's just go look up cores real quick. NPMJS, oops, dot com. So if we go here and we look up this cores, it'll just kind of tell you how to use it. So all we really need to do, it's super simple to set up, is we're going to do app.use and then invoke that cores function that it gives us. Okay? Do you guys remember what that's called when we say app.use? Middleware, boom. Yeah, so this is express middleware that lies between the request and the response. Good. All right, so let's go into our server here and add that line. Server.js, and let's require cores. Const cores equals require cores. Okay, and then we need to do app.use. So Let's just say app.use, and then we also need to invoke that cores function as it showed in the docs there. All right, so now we're pretty much ready to go. Let's say uh, we want to enter in a city, 
And let me go back to what we were doing. Localhost 3000. Oh, maybe I should create a link to, to create a new city, right? Yeah, that'd be good. So let's create a link up in here. Because it's not deployed, is that what you said? Yeah. Well, it would actually be a problem if we were making a request to an entirely different domain, and that other domain is not saying, we will allow requests from anywhere, essentially. Okay. So <clears throat> it's actually something that's imposed by the browser itself. So the browser is basically saying, we won't allow this request to take place unless there's a specific header on the response from the server. Okay, so let me, let me just finish up this link. This is to create a new city. Wow, isn't that kind of terrible, the way that these two things are like immediately next to one another? <laughs> There's kind of an easy way to fix that, but what it does is React actually smashes down our code so that there is no space in between elements. So if I want to force a space between these links, I can do a literal space inside um, curly braces like that and that would do it for me okay so that'll take me to the new cities page and then let's enter in um, San Fran I think we said the population was like 850,000 right picture of that San Francisco yeah <laughs> It's all good. Copy image address. Here we go. <coughs> Keep thinking I'm losing my page, but it's actually here the whole time. All right, so here, let's just enter in this image URL, and let's open up our uh, console tools just in case anything goes wrong. Something did go wrong. Mm -hmm. Didn't I already save my uh, my server change here? <laughs> yeah, it should have restarted itself because wait, wasn't I? I was running this with Node Monitor. Oh, no, no, this is yeah. Sorry, that's React. Yeah, You're right. That's React. Didn't my uh, node mon restart? Hmm. Seems kind of strange. Uh, Francisco, 850. Blocked by core, so if I check the request here. Hmm. You don't even call it on both servers, right? Just the one. You mean on both, like on the front end and yeah. the back end? Yeah. No. Let me try doing it in a new browser that's super strange yeah. yes I do jeez <laughs> getting mixed up with all these different ports here <laughs> oh there <laughs> bless you Lecture started. All right, me fifty. Clearly, that didn't work either. Why are we getting blocked by cores policy? That's super strange. Oh, like actually putting the protocol? You mean? Maybe I didn't. Did, did you mean like here in the API request, including the HTTP here? That's prob that may be what it is. 
Like that, you mean? Yeah, that's actually a good thought. Um, let's try that one more time. <coughs> oh, there we go. Wow, just like that. Okay, so the, we, we know that everything went well, right? Because we got navigated over here to the cities page. All right, fair enough. So if that worked, what we want to do is we want to build out the cities page to actually kind of show what we have in our, in our database, right? So let's go back to that. Let me minimize this, go to our cities page. And here we know that we're going to need to make another API request. So I need to import what? Axios, right? Okay. And then I also want to bring in a couple things from, um, from React. What are they? We, yeah, we're going to need some state because initially when this thing loads, I won't have it in my cities, right? And then what's the other thing? I think I heard it over here. Use effects, right? That will allow us to make this call once and then be done with it. So let's grab use effect and use state. All right, cool. And then inside my component, I'm going to create um, something in my state here. We'll say const cities and then set cities, right? Use state. And initially, we'll just say it's an empty array, right? Okay. And then down here, I'm going to call this use effect function. Okay, what does use effect take? A callback function. All right, so I'll just do it as an arrow function. Okay, and then what's the second thing we want to pass to this use effect call? An empty array. What's that ensuring? That we only do this one time. Okay, so inside here, I'm going to make my Axios call, right? I'm going to say axios.get. And then we'll make it to HTTP slash localhost 4500, right? And then API slash city. So this will be a get request. Okay, so again, since that's returning us a promise, we need to invoke then, right? And we should get back some cities. So what am I going to do with those guys? Set cities, right? I should also be able to just pass in that set cities function in here, no? Okay, so that should essentially have the same effect. And then what we're going to do here um, is we're going to iterate through these guys in our template, right? So, well, um, it would probably be good to have, for now, let's just console log if we get any kind of an error, right? All right, and then inside this div, let's just do an h1 tag, h1, and we'll call this cities. And then for now, I'm just going to loop through them. I'm not going to make any kind of like a special uh, structure or whatever. Let's just do cities.map. Okay, and then each one is going to be a city, right? And I'll also need, yeah, I might need that index if I want to use that as a unique key. So let's do that. One extra set of parentheses, am I missing? Okay. So inside here, let's just do a p tag that has the name of the city. Okay, so we'll say city, inside curly braces, city.name. Okay, and then we want to put in a key here. This is so that React won't get mad at us. <laughs> All right. Let's see where we're at here. Whoa, cities.map is not a function. Okay. So what that means, and, and like, Sometimes this is frustrating, but what that means is that something went wrong inside this, right? The reason why I know that is because if I initially set it to an empty array, 
Oh, I could definitely map through that, right? No problem. It just wouldn't show anything. Right. So if, if something's wrong, it happened in here when I set the data. So let's go take a peek at what we were getting back from that API call. And if I go to change this to XHR here, here's where I made the call to cities. And if I go to preview, it's telling me that I got back this array, right? So why did that not work? <laughs> That's a puzzler. Parenthes these guys? Why? See, the, pro the problem, though, is it's saying cities.map is not functional. So nothing inside is problematic. <laughs> yeah, let me let me just try something real quick and see if I I've lost my mind here. No. Okay. So in this case, let's um, let's console log out cities, right? And let's see what we're getting. So if I go to my console here, before all these errors happened. It was originally an array. Oh, and now look at what it became. I forgot that data thing. You guys remember that? This thing will get you. <laughs> okay, so instead of it being cities, we're actually getting some data, and then we want to grab the cities property from that, right? Okay, so let's come back here. And yeah, what did my server die or something? <laughs> data dot data. No, no, no. My, mine's not called results here, right? So if, so if we look at the, um, the call, this is what we got back. We actually got back an array. So it should be data.cities, right? If I, if I flesh this out a little bit, let's just see what happens. Console.log data.cities. Okay, console, oops. Undefined. It's actually data. <laughs> God dang it. So data is, isn't that what I had before though? Yeah, but just because I called cities, I could call it whatever I want, no? <laughs> oh yeah, because it's because it because it's actually response. It's response of the oh, good grief. This is this is kind of good that we're running into a lot of errors because you guys would probably run into these as well. All right, so I'm just gonna say response. And then over here, we'll say set cities against response.data. Okay. Yay. Pretty sweet. All right. So I'm going to cut it short there. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to meet back up in the afternoon and we'll kind of add some of the other rounds. So I'll, I'll flesh this out. We'll turn these into links so that we can go see each city and so forth. All right. Let's do it around three. Yeah. All right.